Now let me start by answering the question if Unreal 5 is really so amazing. And the answer is yes. Now that we got that out of the way, let's try to understand why. And my explanation will be aimed at architects or to be more generous uh, at the entire building industry. But let's start from the beginning. Now the first thing to say is that uh, Unreal is a game engine. So in the last 30 years or so we have been doing architectural renderings, architectural visualization by using modeling software like 3D Studio Max or Cinema 4D or whatever. And then we used either an inbuilt render solution or some third-party render plugin like uh, the most famous one being V-Ray for quite a while. Now what's important for our story is that uh, photorealism uh, in rendering was always very expensive. So in the visualization world, expensive usually refers to time and not money. Although, yeah, and that means that when you prepare your model, the materials, lights, etc., and you hit render, depending on the power of your computer, you had to wait for several hours until you got a single rendering image with a relatively modest resolution. When I was studying, it was not uncommon to wait for more than 24 hours for a single image render if you wanted a better quality or a larger resolution. And all those animated movies and CGI done for the film industry where they have to render 24 frames for every second of the film, people, uh, people usually used and are still using so-called render farms, a cluster of computers with very expensive GPUs on them. While this was happening in the architectural world, we have all been aware of video games, right? And video games were made with so-called game engines. For those of you not so familiar, a game engine is just a piece of software that contains pre-programmed foundations for almost any video game. It has a physics module, lighting systems, camera systems, movement of the character, and so, etc. etc. So that all of that is out of the box when you want to create a video game and you do not have to program all of that from scratch. So uh, you make your video game on top of that existing code. And almost all of the large video game companies have their own engines. And uh, some of them, uh, during the last decade, decided to open their engine to the rest of the world, uh, to open the code even. To, so two of the most popular being Unity and Unreal, although there are many more. And in this video, we will focus on Unreal. But just to finish up on the game engines, why haven't we used them in architecture so far? Well, in a video game, everything needs to be rendered in real time as your character moves through their world. So that means minimum 30 times per second and very often 60 or even more if you want to do it in VR and so on and so on. And in order to do that, you were not able to achieve high resolution or good quality. You had to keep your meshes, your geometry very rough with as little triangles as you can and your texture and screen resolution had to be relatively low. Now, fast forward to, let's say, 2015, and Unreal 4 starts to show what can be done for architectural visualization in real time. That means you can now move around and not need six hours to render a single image, but instead re render 30 images in a single second. Now, this is one of the best examples. It's from a Brazilian company, UE4ARC, and uh, you will find a link to their channel in, in my description. And notice that this video is five years old. That suddenly seemed like a revolution, right? But before we continue, let's, let's answer two uh, questions. First, how come that this was suddenly possible? from one frame in hours to 30 frames per second. And what does it cost us to be able to pull that off? Well, the first thing that made this possible was an enormous progress in the development of graphic cards, especially by Nvidia. But hardware aside, Unreal did a very good job solving uh, rendering in real time on the software side. And here's the main catch. In game engines, there is a static and dynamic lighting. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you have static objects, the ones that do not move at all in your scene, and you have a fixed light, what you can do is you can bake that light. That's kind of a render where the, the shadows are calculated and then layered on top of your textures. And then you have this nice global illumination that is not calculated in real time. It's sitting there practically embedded in the texture. With this baking of the light, you have three major problems. First you cannot move your objects. And for an interactive architectural visualization, that is kind of a shame because 
We can change materials and light intensity, that's okay, but if I move the couch or replace the couch, the shadows will not be correct and I have to rebake the light. And I cannot do that in real time. So the second problem is that baking of the light takes a lot of time in the same way rendering did. For a complex architectural scene, you might need to wait 6, 12, 18 hours, depending on the quality you want to get. Yes, after the baking is done, the simulation will work in real time, but for any change you want to make, you would have to rebake the lights. Now, finally, and most importantly, in order to bake the lights properly, every object has to have a so-called light map. Now, for you familiar with modeling, you might know that objects have UV maps. Those maps show you uh, show your object unfolded so that you can tell the computer how to wrap the texture around the object. And uh, this UV mapping or, or UV unwrapping is e easy for boxes, but can be very complicated as the shapes become more sculptural. So the same type of maps are needed for light baking and making them for irregularly shaped objects is a huge waste of time. And that's actually one of the main reasons that uh, Unreal Adoption was so slow in the building industry. Uh, no one wanted to waste that much time making light maps for all of the elements in the scene. Now, here at this moment we have to say that recently uh, Unreal introdu introduced a so-called Datasmith, a plugin uh, that's used to import models from different CAD software and uh, generate uh, light maps automatically. And this made everything much easier and much faster, but it did not work perfectly and it only partially solved our problems. Very recently also Unreal introduced real-time ray tracing and that showed a lot of potential, but it relied on very, very powerful graphic cards. And instead of uh, getting technical, we can skip that for now and move straight to our topic. Now, Unreal 5, and this is what you need to know about it. Among many new features, it comes with two amazing components known as Nanite and Lumen, and both of them together promise a revolution in visualization. Again, and here is why. As you know, every geometry inside the modeling software has a mesh representation. In other words, every CGI you have ever seen is a bundle of triangles. So since the beginning of rendering, one of the main parameters that will tell you how long you will wait for your render to be done is uh, the number of triangles, because the rays that are traced have to be calculated for every of the triangle. So we went from thousands to hundreds of thousands of triangles and recently into millions. But there our hardware was being pushed to the limit. So people at Unreal uh, at Epic Games created Nanite, a smart system that does a lot of cool stuff, most of which is very technical and I don't fully understand, from upsampling of the resolution or clustering of triangles to rendering only what is seen and ignoring what is hidden and so on. But the result, however, is uh, mind-boggling. Using Nanite meshes, Unreal 5 is able to render billions, with a B, of triangles in real time at 60 plus frames per second. Now, however amazing Nanite is, it only shows its true power in combination with Lumen, when it comes to architectural visualization at least. And that's another innovative system that solves global illumination in real time. Now, that's that's just a simple sentence, but means such a great leap, again. In order to explain that, let's go back to uh, that same lake house from UE for Arc and look at how it works with Lumen. Now, look at what happens as the objects are deleted and as the lighting conditions are changed. There are no baked shadows. It is all lit dynamically. No light maps, no light ba baking, just plug and play. And you can move and delete objects, add new objects, open windows, you can do whatever you want because light is calculated and updated in real time, like in real life, global illumination in real time. So with an amazing number of detail you can have in your meshes and the real time global illumination, it is unbelievable that this is still entering the architectural world in a very slow pace. And it is another sign of how unbelievably conservative our industry is. And, uh, do not forget, this is a game engine. It's not just about walking through the space. You can change materials, lights, weather conditions, and you can easily move furniture, walls, let water run, fire, snow, anything you can imagine, and all in an interactive video game-like simulation. Now, we have been doing this in our office for 
five years already and we are aware of the very slow progress in the field but the reason I do make videos like this is to explain a bit the technology behind it and maybe help the industry progress. In this video I did it at a very high level just to motivate you to look at so many other amazing examples of ar architectural and non-architectural visualization that people have posted online and I have included some of them in the description. So that's it for now. Uh, this one is not so technical. I might, get, I might make uh, more technical videos in the future on this subject. I hope you like this overview and I will definitely talk about it more in the future. So now let's get back to work.